you know, material things ain't all that. Like, you know, you can't take it with you when you go. Well, my, you can't experience it when you go either. Mm. It's the only time you got to do it. So if this the only time I got to actually enjoy this shit and have it, I want it now. We don't get it, do it again. Can't take it with you when you go. You better enjoy it. You better get it while you're here then. Because if not, what's going to happen? You don't know what's on the other side. You don't get to do this shit again. Like, be like, ain't no Rolls Royce in heaven. So, nigga, you better get one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you got to the chest. <laughs> you better get one now, you chest. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> with your dumb ass. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. This is one of them. Man, this guy I got sitting to my left, bro. Uh, shit, I mean, we can get the accolades out the way, right? He's a, a serial entrepreneur, but I feel like it's, it's more than that now. Um, a teacher. But a lot of you people are not understanding. You gotta learn the game so you can teach the game. Because the more people you help, the more money you make. But I mean, we're gonna get into that. A teacher, a business owner. I mean, this even, I don't know if you still own a jet. I still own a jet brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You owned your own jet at one point. You still do? Nah, I sold it. A jet owner. Mm-hmm. This shit crazy. I think mm-hmm. this is a Gemini too. Facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my brother. <Facts. laughs> yeah. Yeah, my God. I mean, mm-hmm. Mogul for sure. A lot of people think he started off in um credit. And that's when the name got big, but I mean. The definition of a hustler is sitting to my left. I think you even like, you worked at like a kiosk before. Nah, I had you a kiosk. You had a kiosk. Yep, you, yep. you owned a kiosk. Mm-hmm. I mean, the pure definition of a hustler to my left, Mr. Marcus, a.k.a. Him 500. Love, what up, dog? How What's you feeling? Good? It's been a long time coming. <clears throat> Man, facts. Yo. Facts, facts. First of all, how how are you, man? It's, it's December. I just asked uh, Parlay the same thing. I feel like some t- for different people. Yeah. These months and this time of the year get kind of hard mentally. Why you say that? I don't celebrate holidays anymore. Okay. But usually, like holidays, it brings us a lot of memory with your family. You might not have the family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just be a lot on the mental. It'd be like, man. Even if business is good, it's just like you're missing something. I, Pieces be there. Nah, it's crazy you say that because my best friend died that I moved to Atlanta with Mm. December 10th. So it do be a, like, this really be like the most the time. It be like, ah, just a different feeling sit on me. You know what I'm saying? But then it's my daughter's birthday. Like, my daughter's birthday tomorrow. She turns six. So now we celebrate her birthday the 15th, my who passed away birthday the 17th. Mm. So it's like a real weird time and it just it always feel weird now you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like this time of year so when you said that i'm like what do you mean you ask that like it's yeah. just like it's holiday season it's good it's cheery but nah it's 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 a different for me uh it is a, a a weird time but then it's also a time where i feel good because like people ask like yo man i'm praying for you like you know you said and i'd be like nah sometimes I just cry i said but this is the thing is that i feel good with that mm-hmm. like i like being in that emotional sense, looking back, missing my partner, thinking about it, looking back at where we come from and just realizing where I'm at and everything that he don't get to see because then it put my life into perspective. Like, 
dog, we here? Mm. Like, this what it is now? Five million dollar houses, five floors, and like, this it. Like, this is what we was doing it for. And I ain't let my go out in vain and end up still being in a bad position, still being broke, and like, I made it happen. So mm. it's just like, I just wish he was here. But then it, around this time, it's like I'd be more grateful and I really analyze my position, where I'm at, and kind of put it in terms of reality now. Like, dog. And it ain't go out in vain, but was he able to witness a little bit of it? Nah. Hell no. Nah, we was f***ed up. Mm. So it's like we was living in a one-bedroom apartment. He's sleeping on the couch in the living room. I'm sleeping in the room. Like, But even that, like, I understand the sense of, like, maybe, like, I'm doing it for him and he get to watch down on me, but... You never had those thoughts of like, man, damn, I wish he was here to see this part, this Marcus. Mm-hmm. No, 100%. Just to operate in this space. Like, we had a white, our board, we had a white board. We were writing down everything we had to do, but we also had a dreams of like what we wanted. And he had an S550, white S550. And it was like, we, we would ask like, what a perfect day look like when it's right. And, and to think in perspective, I don't want to say like we was down bad, like, we fell on hard times because, like, his car kept getting took. I took no license, da da da, moving to Georgia, figuring that out. But a perfect day was riding down Peachtree in a white S550 with white rims, riding down Peachtree, going to Lenox Mall. Mm. And you're like, crispy pair of Levi's, fresh white tee, tank top, chain, a Rolex. Would have been a perfect day. I live that every day. Every day I get up, I get dressed. I live in Buckhead. I ain't got a white on white S550. I got a blue on blue Rolls Royce. I didn't went a step further. So it's like as I look back and I just look at like what our perfect days used to look like, sometimes I sit there and think about it and be like, hey, we made it happen. Mm. So it's a blessing. So, you know, but that's that's where it's at. You asked about December. And you from... um. You from Cali? Stockton. Stockton. Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. What's like? What's the biggest difference in, in, in your experience of being here compared to over there? Being here, the thing is, like, <clears throat> people always ask, like, oh, man, you know, can you make it in any city, anywhere you at? And it's economically, no. Hmm. I come from a place where we don't have the budget, the city budget. We don't have the atmosphere, the environment. There, it's not conducive to growth, hmm. right? Where I come from is an amazing city where we got, it's a lot of hustlers um, to make it happen in that environment. You got to be strong. So to make it happen there, everything that you go through, everything is against you. When you come to a city like Atlanta, it's like, okay, opportunities are here. Mm -hmm. Concerts come here. You see what I'm saying? Like, our, we don't get big concerts back where I'm from. We get uh, Baby Bash and uh, fucking... I don't. I ain't gonna go into names, but it's like it ain't the Rick Ross, the Jeezy's, the Rod Wave ain't coming to my city. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And so that actually come there, it's like in Atlanta, a Rod Wave gonna be at a concert. I just took my daughter last night, but then he's gonna be at the club. Mm -hmm. So now you got opportunities to book him, but then also restaurants, people serving them food, people putting clothes on them, dressing them. The opportunities to dress these people as they circulate through, and this is on a weekly basis. You know, constantly different people coming through that gives opportunity. So if a, if a person got a clothing brand, they got an opportunity to put them on some of the biggest names and get so much exposure versus the city I come from. We don't have that opportunity because we don't have that level of just celebrity coming through. Access, yeah. So it's the same thing when it comes to sports in this city. It's the same thing that comes to businesses. Like if I want to go out and I go, yo, listen, I'm pulling up on my man. Boom, we fin I'm shooting the podcast with you and I'm going to go to Slim and Huskies and get some food mm. when we get done. I'm going to a black owned establishment right around the corner my man's studio right around the corner over here i got another black owned establishment that a uh, 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 pr agency mm -hmm. so it's so many different ways that when i spend money the valet people is black whenever i go out and spend money it circulates amongst myself mm -hmm. where i come from spanish people mexicans were the predominant uh movers and shakers in the city that can really circulate money it's not blacks so coming here this shit gave me ultimate confidence so it's like where I can deal with people that look like me, talk like me. When I do business, they understand me. It's easy for me to grow here. Yo, why does that matter, though? Like, they understand me 
I could do bins with the, the money is circulating in the black community. Why, why does that matter? Because of the fact that when I talk, you understand it. Mm. I don't got to ask you what's your upbringing like. I don't got to ask you family things that you go through. We already understand each other. It's a certain level of when we sit here, I see your sneakers. I know what it is. I like those. Uh, uh, I know we're, we're damn near within our culture connected. Mm. It doesn't matter if, if you was piss poor. It don't matter if you came up middle class. When it's somebody that look like you, you gonna understand it a little bit different. Mm. If I walk into a room all full of all the ca Caucasians, my receptiveness, because even now it's him 500, they're going to be receptive to me. But we don't connect the same. And, and that makes it a difference because when you're building in an environment like this, it's not, oh, intentionally I got to be around all blacks. Because I say, look, Atlanta is a gift and a curse. Atlanta is the gift to give you the confidence to know you can do business because I can walk in and you'll understand if I'm like, yo, um, I'm trying to do, I don't know, let's just say we're talking cell phone repair. And I'm like, bro, this is what I got for you. And you can already be like, this ain't finna pay me on. He trying to whistle. Mm -hmm. All right, bro, well, just, you ain't coming back. I know your staff. I let you go. You ain't coming back. What you got right now? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm willing to take that. So we understand how to will and deal with each other, right? This allows people to start formulating businesses, side hustles, doing things. It allows us to start creating real businesses. So as an African-American amongst my own people, I'm comfortable doing business with you. I'm comfortable seeing police that's black. I'm comfortable seeing teachers that's black. It gives me a confidence that I belong. Mm. It's a sense of belonging, right? The curse is <clears throat> we make money here and in business in Atlanta, and then we go to the rest of the world and realize that then we got to get a reality check. It's the hardest thing because you got money in Atlanta, and you take your ass to Dubai, and the bright chains and stuff that you wear, or you go in certain environments, and you can't wear your bust-down jewelry. Mm. You got to actually understand etiquette when you sit down with people and you got to know, like, don't grab no wine by the cup, how to grab it by the stem. But if you don't know etiquette and haven't been in these environments, it's not it's not receptive. You, you, you start to make yourself look like a fool. But in Atlanta, you go into a uppity restaurant, you're going to get a cognac, you can wear your bust down watch, you can go <clears> in there and you're going to be accepted as a boss. And then it bursts your boss bubble when you don't have adequate Adequate. I'm etiquette. etiquette. I I'm so slurring. Good. But when your etiquette ain't right, right? And you walk into certain environments, you go, wait, this ain't, this isn't conducive with black success in Atlanta. Black success in Atlanta is I can get dressed, maybe I even wear a nice suit, but I'm gonna go to MCK, I'm gonna go to Knife. They may even have hookah. $60 for a hookah, but it's a uppity restaurant, and this is where the it's who's who's of, of, of the black success. <clears throat> That's the curse part when you go into other places and other environments, and you go to Beverly Hills to sit down with certain people and other ethnicities, and you don't realize you're making yourself look like a fool because you don't know how to drink wine, mm. or you don't know how to pair your wine with, 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 your, with your food. you just like, let me just get, I either I'm going water, and then you don't know what cup or what to use. This is the ultimate confidence because these are things that aren't taught in our community on personal livelihood development. That's why it's important, like, at least get the confidence to business to learn how to get some money. Mm -hmm. Because these other things you can learn how to fix. And in certain rooms, we get more money than, than, than the Caucasian people. They're going to look past it. But then they also will help us learn it and bring us in these environments where it matters to where we can then pick up on, on, the, on the proper etiquette and grow from there. Yo, you, you said a lot, and I heard you, <laughs> but my mind instantly went back to our people on the flip side, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, come to a line that gives you the confidence, and you might go to Dubai, but and, and, and people might judge you, for lack of better words, if you don't know. Mm -hmm. But even in our own community, if you're making more money than me, or, or not even money, if you're on a level of success that I've never seen, attainable by me, it looks different and I still can't even accept you for, for that. How you been a teacher and understanding the game of teaching people, the more people you help, understanding that game, how do you still, how are you able to still talk to your people even though 
they might not think they're your people because they might look at you as a step above them, if that makes sense. Like, how do you come back down to where you was, where you once were at a point? I don't. Mm. This is what it is. What I do is make this the, the standard of acceptability where that we can exist like this. I'm not coming back down to have a conversation or dumb it down to do certain things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge the gap on how we, pay, how we paved the way and how I did it. That's why I'm a teacher. I'm going to show you what I did, how I did it, and what's needed. But at the same time, I am not. The, it, I never really got disconnected because the path is being forged. And everybody, people who with it can come with me. When you see me out, I'm out. You, you, I pulled up. You don't see security all that shit with me. I pull up. What's up? Mm. I'm not, oh, man, I'm, when you see me out, don't speak to me. Like, I'm, I'm walking up. I'm talking to people. I'm going to restaurants. I'm out with my family, out with my kids. I'm still a human. Just because I make a certain amount of money don't mean I ain't a fucking human. Mm. I'm still a I still got flaws. But I you can see, pe- how, I'm, my bad. Can ahead. you see how, again, when you don't, bro, we come from, I'm from the hood. A certain dollar amount make a nigga look like I'm a superhero. So, yeah. like, you can say, I just got money, I'm still a human. But your average, they, like, these are fighting to survive out this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You walking around with a motherfucking jet. <laughs> you ain't no regular human to me. You a superhuman with superpowers. Like, that's 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 a that's that's one of the things though too, bro, that I deal with. Mm. Cause I gotta I gotta look in the mirror and don't see who I am. I don't see what the world sees. Mm. That's the fucked up part. Jay said it, and it's one of the things that I didn't gonna get tatted on me. I could look in the mirror and still not fame is one of the worst drugs known to man. You could look in the mirror like here I am and still not see what you become. Mm. I know I'm guilty of it too, but I ain't like them. Like, dog, like you say that. But I sometimes, like, I was just breaking this down to my wife. I said, I'm, there's a wealthy Arab that live around the corner from me that own real estate. And one of my guys rent the gym from him. And he was like, do you know him 500? He's like, that's my neighbor. And he was like, bro, you should get to know him. And I'm like, all right. I'm walking my garbage cans in my yard. And I'm like, I can speak as people wave and wait riding by. So I wave. And these white people face was just like. And I was like, damn, they look excited to talk to little Marcus from the hood. I still felt like a little from the hood, like I'm impressionable. Like, mm. damn, like, damn, they were saying hi to me, like, and it's like, they saying hi to you. Mm. Like, you know who you is? Mm. And I turn around and I just look at the crib, like, and I'm like, damn. So when people, when you say you a superhero, I, I, I am and I appreciate it. In certain moments, I realize my intellect when I have conversations about life, growth plans, strategies, and things like that, I realized my superpower where I where I came. That's when I realized like who I become when I gotta express my genius. When I gotta put it when I'm putting businesses together and we doing things and I'm breaking it down to people and they like, wait, I didn't think about that. Oh wait, how we do this? Then I realized my growth mm. in those moments. But as just like a person, I feel like I'm still inside. I'm still that 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 insecure kid that's that's like trying to prove himself, that's trying to become something that's still ambitious and trying to go get it. Like, I don't see him 500, see Lil Marcus. Mm. So when we say like our community, when they like, they, they are receptive to me and I had to get used to like going out and, you know, pictures and things like that. One thing that I, I always got to remind myself is that what you said is that everybody don't, look at you like that I get more love than hate I don't get people that's like I don't think it's not possible because people I've helped people do it Mm. so it's a little bit different than like I don't really get like I'm not a rapper Mm. or an athlete like you somebody be like yo LeBron and it's like I know you can't ever do you can't ever be me Mm -hmm. so I can only talk to little athletes with me it's like and bro you could you can get busy (laughs) it's possible you just gotta work Will you do everything that I've done? Probably not. It's 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 not guaranteed. It'd be a little, it's gonna be hard. But if you do a tenth of what I did, your life is it's over. Fifty mm. percent of what I've been able to do is over for you. Your life is over. You in a you in a sweet spot. I said you out of there. Yo, you said fifty percent of what I'll be able to do, your life is over, you in a sweet spot. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That doesn't even paint the picture of the magnitude of the work that you actually put in and the success you got. Mm-hmm. You think about all the success you had and that you have, and I hear you say, man, to me, I'm still little Marcus who's, like, trying to be somebody. Mm-hmm. 
And I wonder, like, where do you think that comes from? Like, if because for me, I'm like, oh, Lil Marcus, who <laughs> trying to be what? Are you crazy? So I'm, I'm just curious, like, because they always like money ain't everything. Clearly, right? Well, clearly in your perspective, but a nigga that ain't got no money, think now, money, is everything. money is everything, though. I'm still gonna say money is okay. everything. Okay, before 100%. we get there, we're gonna get there. Yeah. But with all of the success and that you have, and you saw the fact that you can be like, I'm still a little Marcus in the inside, you still got your ways about your insecurities or whatever. Where does that come from? When you when somebody will look at you and be like, he got it all. That ain't that ain't that's that's outside. That ain't me. I mm-hmm. can only be who I am. So when you come out of an environment of not being exposed and seeing things like Rolls Royces and houses and just like it wasn't normal. You wanted to achieve it. So you was grinding to achieve that. And you look at something in that and when you working to achieve something, sometimes it feels like it's like I I want it, but it's like when you grinding to get it, it, it wasn't yours. So it wasn't given to you easily. You grinding for it. So it's like I'm trying to get something and you looking at things on a vision board and and you figuring out ways to if I remember the first time being in a Rolls Royce, I rented one. And it's like, you start realizing, like, man, am I, I'm trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be something. Man. On that journey, once you get there, just because you've arrived, don't mean that that person who's always been aspiring and trying to be something, just be like, oh, you that nigga now, and now you just got this automatic switch. Now you, you get s- the second guess, I'm like, is this even me? You still that same person you spent. I, I spent more time grinding to get here than I spent here. Jeez. So now I'm still, I have to get rid of that person. But I've, I've, I ain't been here 15 years. But I was grinding 15 years saying what I wanted. Once I start getting the things that I want, don't mean that that person who was like, and I'm doing all this work and it ain't paying off. I'm not did this, it don't this ain't work. This took a failure. All of those failures and things like that take a play and sit on your conscience, on your subconscious, on your ego, on your pride. And that's the difference when I tell people like, this is why you gotta keep going. Because it make as you keep going and taking them L's and you take things, you let it sit on your conscience, you gotta realize that you gotta stand on top of that shit. You just gotta keep concreting the foundation in to where you get to a certain point, you like, damn, okay, I got all of this. But then I got to unpack all of these goddamn traumas, too, that then came with me mm. that curate and kind of like identify what you're saying. It's like, well, how do you feel that? Because I spent more time trying to be somebody mm. I wanted to be. And now I'm the person I want to be. And it's like, am I faking? Mm. Is this <laughs> is this real? So it kind of just sit me in a weird place. That's that's some deep shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's crazy because mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's easy to look at you and be like, man, he got it all figured out. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, you have no idea. It's every day. <clears throat> and you look at, bro, I look at people, bro, I look at, at myself. And I'm blessed because of the experiences that I have. And I realize that when I look at myself, if I go into my 500 bag and start popping my shit, I go into it because of what I've been able to experience and what that has taught me. Mm. I only know certain etiquette and certain moves and how to do certain things because of the places I've been and the things I've experienced. I would, If I wouldn't have ever got a, a, a Jet Smarter account, I wouldn't have never got on a private jet, 7,500 for the me- membership, $250 to, to, to get on an empty leg, put me on a private jet. That exposed me into the, the private jet industry. By 32 years old, I bought a private jet, cash. I wouldn't have did it if I wouldn't have put that 7,500 up. But that experience exposed me to something. So for me, I always feel like I got more to grow. And I'm I'm actually okay with not being like, oh, looking in the mirror and seeing myself as that because I still feel like I got so much more to do. Mm-hmm. When you see companies, when you see hold through title and, and all of these different business moves that happen, you like, nah, I, it's, it's more that I want to do, that I want to open myself up to. So I got to keep experiencing things from a, humility standpoint mm. and being like okay I still got more growth to do you got more experiences to make because I can look back and say like this shit that I eat the places how I travel knowing the hotels knowing the things I do now I've elevated my whole life 
but that's because I got to experience those things. How does those things... This is crazy, bro, because my mind is just going so many places. Those experiences, I hear a, a bunch of um, physical things. How do those experiences impact your character when we talk about humility, though? Like, how does it change that? Because, again, a nigga don't got nothing, you can't tell him shit. A nigga got everything, you can't tell him shit either. But with those experiences come a different type level of confidence. But how does it... How does it shape your character? It, 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 this is the thing with character for myself. What I've realized, Martin Luther King had a fear that he was leading his people into a burning building when it came to lack of financial education and, and, and leading his people into freedom. Like he questioned, it was a speech somebody was repeating to me like, am I leading my people into a burning building? And they said, well, you kind of leading our people out of a burning building by teaching them financial literacy. And I said, the bad part is it's going to be casualties that get burned in this building on this journey. As I've matured, I thought I did everything right by teaching people and doing things. You, you, I learned so much to the point where, let's, I'm going to rewrap this into it. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much that now I can look back on mistakes that I've made and ways that I can better correct myself for my people. It's a thing where you start to learn and go, I look at the schools my daughter go to and I compare them for every single school that they've been to and realize I can get my daughter into the top schools, top educational facilities. I see the programs that are available for them. I see the things like my daughter's is under, like my oldest is already doing CAD. She understands Canva. They're doing projects, doing design. She's designing mock-up T-shirts for her uh, black girl community. They're doing shirts and doing videos. And they're choreographing things with AI and softwares. And I'm like, a year ago you wasn't, two years ago at the other institution you was at wasn't like this. Mm the after school programs that they into, the things that they get to learn. And I go, when she get ready to go to college, the things that she's already been prepped and taught was normal to her. A kid that comes out of a, 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 a out of the hood, average black kid, to make it to her level will have to be excellent and excel over and beyond to get there. Meaning to excel over and beyond is already a fucking battle for me. You're coming down smooth pathway, just trotting alone. By the time I, when we both get to here to apply for college, this is just normal to you. It's routine. These are things that I've been taught, ways I've been taught to think. The opportunities for softwares and, and extra teaching and extra attention. I had to go study and I was special. I had to work hard for this shit. And I was, and this makes me <clears throat> special compared to the other people because the lack of resources and tax dollars put into these black schools. When she get here and apply and go to college, and they apply and go to college, because of the resources and everything in the school system that she comes from, coming out of private institutions and things like this, her over-excelling puts her 10 times up, 10 steps up, and easier. Meanwhile, the same person, this this kid who been over exceeded, their their success and they made it just by getting into the school. Mm -hmm. Mine, it's like, oh, you here, but it's still we already got your plan on your exit out. Once a kid excels out of a black community and makes it to a good college, nobody else in the world that they knew before can help them. Mm -hmm. You're fucking by yourself. My daughter now has been probed, educated by higher level education people and already has been, she's studying abroad next year going to Tokyo. She's already being trained at fucking 11, 10. These kids don't get that exposure. So you. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say, as I've learned more, I realized how unfair mm. And how hard it is for our people. 
And when these people get to this position and we say, all you got to do is work, all you need to do is you need resources. If you apply yourself, you can make it. But you don't realize that, oh, I, I was the, 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 the smartest person in my school. I graduated with honor roll. I did all of these things, but I had to work my ass off because I also had to do it in this environment. Mm. All the traumas that that person is going to face from the friends thinking that you're better than, the people you leave behind, the getting out of that environment, all of those traumas and all of that type of shit now plays a factor into when you come into the real world and you don't got resources and you by yourself. It's not fair. And now I look back and say, okay, I've been blessed to get to this position, but I can look at how unfair it is when it comes to our traumas and the healing that we need as a people and the love that we got to pass amongst each other and understanding one another and saying, man, you did that, it was stupid. And yeah, you went and fucked up, but your intention was right. Mm. But you did some dumb shit or you did some fuck shit. You didn't rob somebody. You didn't ran off on. They tried to give you opportunity and you stealing from the job. And it's like, well, why? Winston Jameson stealing crab legs and shit. I think it's just stealing, putting soda in a water cup. Why? Because I'm so prone to being broke. It's just something we do. Stealing is, that's normal. Mm. Putting soda in a water cup is not out of the normal. You like so. But it's still getting the altercation at the basketball game or something and firing off on somebody, hitting somebody. You're like, oh, man, you got snuffed. You'd be like, so what? No, that's assault and battery. You go to prison. Mm. Nigga, we sock niggas all the time in the hood. But in these environments, this type of activity is not acceptable. Mm. And you don't realize that those are traumas and a whole bunch of miseducated and, 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 and misprogrammed individuals that now go out into the world and we got to try to like hold all that back. Nigga, it ain't fair. It's so fucked up. So now for me being where I'm at, I see it now and I just go, damn, bro, I ain't seen none of this shit before. That's the, the worst part for me now is being able to see things at a bigger lens and go, okay. Now I have to figure, I, I can't see it and not adjust to it. You understanding that. I can see how you would be, you would give grace to people to fuck up. Do you feel like, because again, you hit a lot of milestones that you probably was the first and niggas couldn't even understand where you were because you hit by yourself. When you was hitting the milestones, looking back on it, do you feel like people should have been more like graceful with you? Do you wish they would have been more graceful with you? With the mistakes that you might have done? Nah, mm -hmm. like, you know, for me, I got a different, like, as I came through my milestones, I feel like God blessed me mm -hmm. because he put certain people in my life to make everything a learning lesson, and I constantly grew. Like, I remember losing friends when I had my first $100,000 a month because it was uncomfortable to talk to people. I had nobody to talk to. That's when me and Alex built our relationship. Like, me and Alex built our relationship because we was like, yo, if you ain't never got nobody to talk to, you can call and talk to me and pop your shit. I ain't going to never hate if you feel like bragging. You can call me and brag, my nigga. I'm that friend. He told you that? That's what he told me. And I'm like, bro, I did 100000 in a month. And he, that's what he reassured. And I felt like that was God putting people back into my life, mm -hmm. like putting the right people into my life because my old friends I couldn't have that conversation with because it was like, like he's showing off brag uh you know or you know what they do for me or how can i ask for something so for me to look back and i felt like that was things that people we put in my life for a reason same thing now i look and it's a lot of things that can be put into my life everything is for a reason because it's to help me make me more comfortable at the next level mm. do you think it is it anything that you look back and be like man that was fucked up or like like you regret or you wish ain't happened? Nah, like, I'm so, bro, I'm so blessed in the position I'm in. It's like, my dad get out of prison next year in November. Been gone since I was six. I'm thankful he went to jail. Mm. Because I wouldn't be who I am today. I don't know what his, what, what his influence would have did to me. I don't know what his absence contributed and did to me. I can't pinpoint it. 
But everything that put me where I'm at today, with the family I got, with the wife that I got, with the kids that I got, with the experiences that I got, with everything, every relationship exactly how it is, fucked up, good or bad, with parents, family, re- siblings, whatever, I wouldn't change nothing. Mm. It's nothing I wouldn't change. Like I'm pretty sure some shit hurt though coming along the way though. A, a lot of shit hurt, but <laughs> but but a lot of shit, but but. <laughs> This shit feel better when you understand it because I put things in perspective. Like when you look back and I got family members that be upset with me because of what I don't do. But it's like, or I don't answer my phone and talk to people. And it's, it's, I've came to a point I only know I can control me. And in this whole world, see, it's nothing outside of this that I can control. My biggest strong, my biggest superpower is the fact of me knowing that the only thing I got control over in this world is me how I perceive things, how I react to things, how I let things affect me, how I respond and how I control myself in any situation. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can control. That's part of the biggest, my biggest growth. When you talk about me like growing and maturing is maturing to a situation, realizing I can only control me. Mm -hmm. So if a situation happened that's negative, all I can do is analyze what I did to contribute to it, how did I play a part in it? What do I learn from it? What do I take away? And how I control myself to move in this? Mm. So when people be mad, they be like, yo, you don't answer the phone or don't talk to me. It's because I know I can't control our relationship or what you're going to say. I can't control what you're going to do. But I can control and I do know for a fact that if I'm sitting here and I'm building out, I got, I'm building out multiple million dollar deals and structuring things. I know where my mindset is at and where it needs to be at. And if you call me talking about little, little, little homie got shot in the hood going through this with my girl, she tripping with me about this shit, I know for a fucking fact that nothing in that conversation is conducive to what I got to do here, and now you just planted unnecessary conversation, taking my brain power away to think about something that I ain't even worried about. Mm-hmm. Nigga be sitting there worried about his girl arguing and fighting with him for no reason. You be like, why I'm looking at my girl asking her about some shit? It's because, nigga, y'all talk your dumb ass for 30 minutes, two hours about some dumb shit you and your girl going through and now it's affected me, and now I'm having an argument with my girl, or we having a conversation about it. So I done had two dumbass conversations when I should be having more so conducive thoughts or relaxing to myself. Hmm, that's interesting. So how do we be there for one another though, as friends? Because that's that's a great point. But sometimes you go through shit like you ain't mm-hmm. prone to not going through shit, and I'm pretty sure you gotta have somebody to talk to you when you're going through shit. Yep. What if that person was like? I'm not trying to talk to Marcus ass like the fuck you got these problems. I'm trying to make a bigger dollars. Like you talk about this fucking relationship shit. 100 percent right? <clears throat> I would understand if a person said I, if they not in that space to talk to me at that time. Mm. Because it's the space that they in, and it's not 24-7. But I have moments where people they can't talk to me. Okay. And it's like sometimes I know what people be going through. You know who who calls for what. I got one of my homies right now I can call. And I, I, my, his last message to me is probably, fuck you, bitch ass nigga. Or he gonna say, oh, Marcus, like, fuck that nigga, Kev. Boom, 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 right? I'm one of my best friends. But I got messages I sent him. So, fuck that nigga, Marcus, bitch ass nigga. I ain't talking to him. My other partners always answer my phone calls. But he know, he be like, nah, call me, nigga. I ain't talked to you in two weeks, nigga. And, and he be like, what you doing? And he'll ask, like, what you got going on? And he be like, oh, bet. And he be like, I ain't want that. I just wanted to shoot the shit. And he was like, but nigga, hit me or let me know when you want to rap or listen to this. I want to want you to listen to this music shit. And then we'll talk. And mm-hmm. I'd be like, okay, bet. But then he'll know, like, what you got going on? You good? And he'd be like, nah, I'm going to hit you, bro. I want shit. Or, or he know it's something that's some real bullshit, street shit. And it'd be like, man, so and so went to jail because we still, I still, I gossip with my homeboys and shit. Mm-hmm. But it'd be in times they know, like, when I'm focused on something, it'd be like, bro. This ain't the time for that. I can't do it. Like right now, I can't hear that shit. Okay. And so, but for me, it's like it, it is in fairness, but I control myself. And then I, this is how I know my growth. To know what conversation I'm putting on somebody when it's time for me to vent. Asking, is the person I call, is this something that will throw them off their wheelhouse? Mm. And is this the per- perfect? You had a capacity to, to, to talk have this conversation. Right yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah. And sometimes you need to talk to your friends, but sometimes you need to go, you, it's, it's the, the people that's involved in the situation or that's where therapy and therapists and proper channels on how to deal with things that's going on in your life come into play. 
And a lot of times we go to the wrong source to think like, oh, you just need somebody to talk to. Okay, I just need somebody to talk to. What the fuck make this person certified to be the person to talk to just because they in my life? Mm. And then they wrong for not being able to talk to me? I'm not a, a, a boyfriend, a marriage counselor. I'm, a, I'm kind of an asshole. So, and I'm a Gemini, so depending on what person you get, <laughs> it's going to depend on the energy you get. Facts. I'm not the, necessarily the best person for you to call and talk about this. That's starting to self-realize and self-assess. Am I even talking? Be like, oh, I just need somebody to talk to. Does that mean that that person is the right person to talk mm. to? Who made that the right person to talk to? You're probably doing more damage calling me to talk to me about something than you think it is. What makes me the good person to talk to? Because I got money? Mm. or just because I'm your cousin, I'm your brother, that does not mean that I'm the person for you to have this conversation with. There's brother conversations that when you just need to talk to your brother about some brother things, and sometimes it's like you got problems and issues that your brother ain't the one to talk to about it because he's going to be your brother. Mm. Self-analyzing and realizing that is a game changer. So it's like you can always flip a situation either way. Yeah, sometimes I talk to people who depend on the space that I'm in. But then I also analyze, am I the right person to be talking to? And are you the right person for me to talk to in this space? And is this to, to get be the outcome that I want? Is this the person to talk to? Mm. Yo, speaking of self-analyzing, right? It's something, and you just touched on it, like basically like being new to all of these positions, right? Like being the first and not being able to have nobody to talk to and all that because like you're, you're new to the space yourself and like, well, and nobody else have the experience. One thing you said, I think you might have been talking to Neo. And this shit blew my mind. Pause. Like, this shit, you were saying something about, basically, like, when niggas make it, like, our, our thought process is like, um, nah, fuck that, I ain't going back type shit. I got to do this so I don't go back type shit. Mm -hmm. And you was like, you should think of it another way. Basically, like, I know one one of the things was, I don't tell my daughter I love her to death. I love it. I lo like love me to life. I love you. Life. But a part of this was about the mindset of like, like you you get something and it's like, man, I'm working my ass off because I ain't going back. But because we not used to being in this space, right? Like we don't know, how, we don't even know how to operate in this space. But when you operate in that space with that mentality, you end up going back. That's where your focus, <clears throat> where focus goes. And what I said was, is that I'm not grinding. And, and, and my grind can't be driven. Our grind can no longer be driven based off of the fear of not going back to where we used to be. It has to be focused and we have to be motivated and driven by the destinations that we want to reach. How do I get there? How do a person get there? Is, Fuck getting a million dollars. Yeah. I, I, because you can get a million dollars and I'm like, and this is so many of us and my bad. I'm, cause yep. it, I, I'm a, be a little selfish now in the conversation. My first time ever like making money my first thought, like, so when you said it, it fucked me up. Because my first time ever, like, make, I came to Atlanta, I'm getting the most money ever. And my first thought is, nah, I was scared. Because yep. it's like, man, I do, I can't go back. I can't, bro. Like, this shit is different. Mm -hmm. And when you said it, I'm like, nah, wait. How the fuck you get there? <laughs> like, nah, wait. How, how do I get in? How do you do that? Like, what do that look like? What that process look like? Bro, that's a... See, that's when niggas really start talking. Like, when we talk and we sit and we talk like brothers like that, it's like, look, bro, so when you do things is that we, 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 these, how can I say, the safe niggas and the house niggas, they, they, they push a narrative of, like, don't do certain things, don't buy certain cars, be disresponsible and things like that. And it puts people in a fucked up position where it's like, I just don't want to be broke. And it's like, oh, those are the things that make me go broke. And it's like, there's never a pro to actually accomplishing the shit that helped you get out the hood, that mm -hmm. helped you start making money. Because when you was making money, you wasn't making money to be like, I want to be financially free. You was making money. When you start making money, it's like, I want a certain car. I need certain kicks. I'm, ooh, need to be on sacks. Like, off ice drop. That shit hard. Mm -hmm. And you be looking at clothes. You looking at certain shit. That shit drove you <coughs> to hustle and do what you did to get money. What was the factors of like, I'm getting money, but I want like, you looking on the watch size, you on Icebox, you on Fezzy, looking at, you're like, damn, that chain hard. How much that watch cost? 25000 Damn, I would have to. These are the shit that help you get there, right? Mm. You have to overcome that. When you start getting money, it's like, yo, I want a Hellcat. Nobody says, I want to work 
80 hours a week. I want to work 120 hours a week. I'm going to shoot 150 podcasts. This is what I'm going to do it for. It's like, nah, it got to be attached to something. And so for me, I have a lot of selfish and materialistic goals and shit that I wanted to do. But this shit would keep me up at night. Like, I'd be up looking at jewelry. It's the shit that I'm into. When you start to accomplish that type of shit and you start getting it and you start actually being able to partake, then you realize, oh, it ain't that important. Then you get to a point where you get to a point where you can think clearly mm. and you can start figuring out what am I doing this for? If you don't accomplish shit and you don't feed your vices and you don't feed your spirit, your ego and pride, nigga, you can't get to this point to where you start to look and be like, I'm doing it for the future. Mm. No, nigga, because my fu- I, ain't, I ain't accomplished my, my foundation yet. Mm. I haven't did my dumb shit. I haven't fed my ego and my pride. I didn't work my ass off. I'm tired of niggas. I seen the niggas who was flying in school. Seen the dope boys go cop their whips and shit. That pressure still sit on me from the hood. Mm. Nah, nigga, I got it now. Okay, now I can operate. Once I get to a spot where... I'm competing because it's out. It, it's men. We got bravado. Nigga, we got, I got to look at you and you, nigga, you got, okay, I see how you riding. And I'm in a, in a Honda and you telling me to be like, focus on the future and don't focus on never going back to the hood. No, nah, let me make sure niggas know I ain't get out the hood. Let my ego and my pride stand on it and be like, nah, you know what? I've accomplished the, the, the superficial things that I feel coming out of the hood. Made me successful, but don't that shit set you back, or you need that? And the things that the, the things that make me no longer the things the superficial things that allow me to know that I made it out the hood, I need it. The superficial things is the things that let us know we ain't, we, we we made it mm-hmm. in the hood. That's the things that let you made it. S five fifty bins will let you know that you made it. Uh, your own house, a condo, depending on lifestyle, right? Me at, at 21, 22, to know that I made it, I felt like I needed S550 bins and a high rise. That will let me know, like, man, I escaped poverty. And then you realize, like, nigga, you renting. Mm-hmm. Then you realize, like, then you live in month to month. Okay, as I start acquiring, then I start looking like, man, you don't own property. Now you're like, yo, you renting, paying all this money in rent? Oh, man, the high rise let me know I made it, but I'm paying $2,100 a month in rent. Yeah. Damn, I could have paid this on a mortgage. But you need that. You need to see that. But now I've gotten to a point where I could afford this type of shit. Mm. I'm paying $2,100 a month on, on rent and going, wait, I could have a mortgage. But telling a nigga in the hood, nigga, you can get a mortgage for $2,100 a month. He's like, I don't care. Nigga. I want a high rise. Right. I can see. I know how I want to live. I don't know what I got to do to live the life that I want to live. I just know how I want to live. So we got to get to a point, and I tell people, you got to understand, it ain't telling people, oh, this is what you got to do to live, like, this is what you need to do. They know how they want to live. You know what kind of house you want. You know if you want a modern house, if you want a brick mansion. You, you, you've known. You looked at Zillow. You know certain watches you want. You know. I'm asking you, do you know? Mm-hmm. What's your dream watch? I don't have a dream watch. What's a watch on your list that you look at? You oh, like, Rolex, oh. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Car. I'm a simple nigga. I don't really have no dream, nothing. Like, what kind of get to this bag? W- with a bag, when you with a bag, what your house look like? Oh yeah, my house for sure. What yeah, kind of house? It gotta be decked out for sure. I'm saying you got square footage. You know a style. You want a modern pup. You want a, a big massive pup. You want it on a country club. You want yet. a backyard. I ain't there yet. I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. Then what you doing it for when you say you want a bag? What's the bag for? Mm, freedom, to be honest. Keep it funky with you. Freedom from what? Time for me. What you spend your time doing right now? Working. You working nine to five right now? No, no, no. Like podcast shit. I was just talking to my man. Like, but everything. Like, I'm I'm grinding. I'm in grind mode right now. I just I just got rid of the job. So my point is though, you know you didn't want to work a nine to five no more. It's things that you start to tie to it, and you feel like when you made it, you feel like you made it yet. Hell no, not even close, nigga. What are you talking about? Okay. Bro, you come on my podcast trying to embarrass me, nigga. Nah. Like, the fuck so, on my face, man. Go so, ahead. So, nigga, this is what I, my <laughs> point is, right? If you you ain't feel like you made it yet, but it's certain things that you know that, that what would make you feel like you made it, my nigga? Mm. Like, what would make you feel like you made it? Nigga, you know what the fuck would make me feel like I made it? Nigga. Nah, I don't, nigga, because <laughs> your make it and my make it two different ones. I cover Stockton, in California. A couple of them things in the Ooh. bank. A couple of them things. What? Listen, man. Yeah, but, like, but this nah, is for real. because the, nah, so because, honestly, it's a couple things. It's 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 it's, it's different nuances to it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
one of the things that I think that make make it is the impact that I have to somebody who has no platform. Right now, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky with you. Like right now, I feel like people acknowledge me for getting a celebrity guest and shit like that. But I knew I made it when I can just randomly go outside. Somebody had a fucked up day or some some real hard shit went through. I could bring them in the studio and we could turn them up because of the platform. That's when I knew I made it. When I can really change that nigga life. I don't need no nigga with a couple million followers. Now I can go out there and get a nobody. We get up on here, we talk. And because they, your impact has grown. Yeah, that's so, when I know I made it, for real. So when you got impact off your name and your and your own shit standing on itself. Mm-hmm. So, but that's that's things like when I, my point is is that you got to be able to identify that shit. If you don't, then you working for nothing. Oh, fact. And that's that's the things that most niggas in the hood coming from where we come from know shit that they want. Mm. Niggas be real or not, niggas will tell you, nah. I want a Rolex. I want an AP. I want an AP skeleton. That motherfucker code. I want the Rolex with the Tiffany face. Like it's certain shit that, or a nigga like, man, I just want a motherfucking buy my mama house. Mm-hmm. It's certain shit that a nigga say, like it got to be tied to something of what they're doing this for. Because every day you get up and work, you can't get up and work and be like, I just want to hopefully one day be free. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, nigga, they no, got to be tied to something. Yeah, fact. And so going into the point where you asked me about was, what do I say about the like the the being responsible and shit like that? And how do we get to a point where you're doing it for the future? You got to break through a certain ecosystem. Yeah. Facts. You're and right. once you get through that ecosystem of the struggle and out of those vices where those nuances and things like that matter, then you can look and say, okay, I'm not grinding. Now I don't want to be grinding not to go back there. You can't be in the hood saying I'm grinding not, I ain't grinding not to be in the hood or I ain't grinding not to be working a nine to five and you still working a nine to five. Mm. It's, it, 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 you, mentally you can't, prepare yourself for that. You got to experience certain things and be like, bro, we disconnected from that already. Mm. That don't even exist in our world, in our ecosystem. Facts. It don't. So for me, when I was like me talking to Neil about that is because it does not exist in our ecosystem no more. So we can't look and say, oh yeah, man, I just don't ever want to go back to working on a food truck. Nigga, your skill set yeah. is so strong and the things that you know and the relationship that you have will never allow you to go back to that level of grinding and petty making $150 a week. It can't, it's just because of where you've elevated to. I get that. That's, so as yeah. you grow and you elevate, you get to a point where it's like, if you start podcasting now and you you keep going and you growing in your podcast, you're on YouTube, you start monetizing YouTube, figuring out, okay, how I get this shit to give me 15000 a month? Mm-hmm. Off a of reoccurring, you like, damn, I got fifteen thousand dollars a month reoccurring. Oh, it's up. Yeah. Then you go, wait, if I added and was selling this, or I got deals, brand deals, and I didn't did a deal. Now I'm doing a deal, sport broadcast X amount with the NBA. Wait a minute, I didn't got up to like, I'm y'all, I'm bringing in, clicking a million dollars a, a, a year, two, three million a year. Hold on, it's up. Mm. Now you're doing three million a year. You got relationships with other people who bringing you deals, hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars at a time. You never go back to a point and you be like, at that point, you start to say, I, I would hate for you to be saying, yeah, I'm doing everything because I don't never want to go back to my nine to five. Yeah. You're not it, even thinking about that. Like, that's not even in your peripheral. Like, yeah. You yeah. got to be analyzing because when you're in that position, if you looking back, you're not giving them the proper attention and everything that's being presented to you and all the proper opportunities. You're not properly digesting them and processing them because you still you looking back. And you looking at, I don't ever want to go back to the hood, so you doing shit out of scarcity. Nigga, you got to do shit out of motherfucking growth. You got to do shit out of prosperity and how I want to prosper. I don't move for, oh, I don't ever want to go back to being broke. Nigga, I'm doing shit because I'm trying to get $100 million. Mm-hmm. So when deals and shit come about, when I wake up and I do certain things, it's because it got to be conducive to me trying to get $100 million. It ain't to me trying to not ever be broke again. Nigga, I don't even want to operate like that. You see what I'm saying? You just body that. You broke it down so eloquently. I say that because... Now that you, at first, it fucked me up, but respectfully, I'll give you respect. I'm not there when it comes to that. It's other places that I acknowledge now. It's like, like, that I, I couldn't even, like, I don't even know. Like, my quality of my content, I, I can't even, I'm talking about new cameras, and niggas is like, bro, what? Your yeah, cameras is good. I can't even think about my first, like, that is not even in my mind, because, like, that would never even, so I get what you're saying. Like, like that's not even a thought. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this then, because a, a lot of niggas ain't on that level when it comes to financially, though. Can I get another cup of water, bro? How do you get there? Because you just broke it down like, 
Yeah, I could talk about that in other ways. But niggas is trying to get that financial because when you get a, like I said, you get a good job, it's like, damn, man, I got to study. I don't even want them. Because you ain't used to, it's our first time here. Mm -hmm. How do you, how, what would your suggestion be? To what? How to get to the money? To that that place, that place. Not even just get to the money. Because get, I feel like get to the money is easy. But you need to understand how to keep that shit. Getting to the money ain't easy. You don't think so? Hell no. Shit ain't easy. If it was easy, everybody do it. Getting to the money is is a it's a it's another level of like self-discipline and, and, and self-realization. Like you gotta kind of know yourself. You can luck up and run into some shit, but you gotta analyze and be able to judge and, and, and fall on self. A lot of people got we the, the the worst thing in this world is fucking pity, self pity. Mm. Woe is me. You know what I'm saying? What everything that's negative, nigga. I'm a crack baby. I accepted that. That's why I'm rich. Mm. Nigga, I accepted the worst thing that can possibly happen in my life. The worst thing that goes on with me, I accepted it, understood it, embraced it, and made that a part of who I am because. It, it, it's a contribute a contributing factor. Mm. Imagine niggas sitting there and be like, "Yeah, man, I was fucked up since a kid. You know, I I had ADHD. I didn't pay good attention in school. This, then, the third. Like, I can make all these fucking reasons of like problematic shit to live off of it, but that shit wouldn't help me be great. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like that shit wouldn't help me be great. So what I look at is like that. Woe is me. Like you got to be self real, a uh, 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 self realist. Nigga, you five ten, five you five seven. You ain't going to the NBA. Mm. Hang it up. But you may be great at sports, but what's my benefits? How do I extract the most out of my talent? Is it okay? Let me be an agent. Let me get into the industry. I, I love the, 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 the actual industry, so I want to be involved in it. Okay, I can get to college and get a degree in certain things, but you know what? Let me get my GPA so high up to let me pick what college I'm going to go to because I know, okay, I understand the business nor and I probably could make the team. But where the number one draft pick going? Because if I get on this nigga team and he may go to the NBA, and top 10, let me see who's who's going to make it where I can help build their business infrastructure out and be a part of the business, not, oh, I got to go and try to be the star. Mm. But parents then set a, pre, a fake pre-notion that you can be whatever you want to be. You can do it. And so you think it like, oh, man, you got that competitive edge. Oh, I'm going to go make it. I'm going to be Muggsy Bowes. And it's like... You could have better analyzed the situation, the opportunities that presented themselves to you if you realistically was real with yourself. Mm. It's guaranteed in business that biz most multiple people are going to need your help in business if you learn the industry. Figure out how to get into the best school for either education or get around some of the best players that you can then go be an asset to. And then guess what happens? If I'm an asset to LeBron, it trickles down. And it don't even got to be LeBron. It could be a mid a mid-range player. Now you ask it to 10, 15 other people, you get paid for the rest of your life. But that sounds like some elite thinking. I I that what I hear is more elite thinking than like self-evaluation. Cause that's like, even if you think about it, all right, I might not be to the 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 league. Like you said, the way we come from, our first thought is, all right, I'm being real myself. I ain't gonna make it to the league. Damn. The next level after that is the thought process. That's it sounds more about the elite thinking than self evaluation. In order, in order for you to, when you say elite thinking, right? You think about it. Who control your thinking? You do. Only one motherfucker control what you think. Mm. So, if you don't think elite, then what you think? Mm. Some mediocre thinking. What you think about? Some dumb shit. You got a choice every 24 hours to wake up, and whatever you think about is your fucking choice. You choose to think about and, and feed yourself with dumb shit. Congratulations, nigga. You know all LeBron's stats. Fucking bozo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas know LeBron every stat. Niggas know every fucking record, who winning, who going to go to the, the odds, Vegas bets and shit like that. And, nigga, you betting $50 on a game. You mean to tell me you know all these over and unders and you ain't got no fucking money? Mm. You got to know overs and unders. You trying to sports bet because you know all these niggas' stats. You know who the probabilities, the likelihood, and all of this shit. But you don't know how to set up a funnel and, and realize the probabilities and the likelihood of somebody buying from you if you get exposed and you get a video that reached 100,000 people. How much money you can make if they all spend an extra, if the average cart value on a customer 
the entry point is five dollars and the average car end up being seventy five dollars because you put up sales and down sales. Then you put monthly subscriptions onto the customers buying once they see your product off of this many getting in front of this many people. Oh, man, that's hella hard, bro. That's that business shit is hard. I don't want to do it. <laughs> nah, you dumbass nigga. You just choosing to fucking look at sports. You know this nigga going to rush for nine yards, seven yards to carry. Give it to him X amount of times. We probably can. Nigga, you understand business, nigga. You just don't understand how to get some money because you, you fucking dumb. You think about dumb shit. It's not, oh, I don't got that level of thinking. You do. You just use your elite level of fucking brain power on stupid shit. <laughs> nah, he just snapped. That was crazy. That then, was it's like, then it's like you wrong. Have pity. But sometimes you got to have a man conversation. Mm. Now let's have a man conversation where it's like, nah, you know, think about it. Because I see people, LeBron outscored this, he top scored, he did this. And it's like, that's great for LeBron. And I'm great that you're able to learn that. That just shows that you can think and you can learn. But you'll argue with a nigga. LeBron versus Jordan can start an argument and half the world can go, go into it. And they all going to have points and valid points. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Now, what's your credit score? What's your credit score? And how much money you got coming in reoccurring? And then what, what's your projections for the next five years? Now, all these niggas that was yelling and barking is bitches. You tuck your nuts when it come to getting money. Mm-hmm. Now, you niggas is soft. Now it's all, oh, yeah, man, they don't teach us this in school. Now it's woe is me. Mm. Nah, nigga, it ain't no woe is you when it was LeBron. Keep that same energy. You an you a alpha man with that. Then you niggas turn soft when you start talking about money. Feeding your fucking kids. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, niggas will, adults, our community know that the black school system is deprived and they don't teach us things that we need to know. We hear so many people say it. They don't teach us financial literacy. They don't teach us this in school. They don't do all of this. And if your kids get bad grades, you, you punish them. Mm. So you punish your kids and hold them to a standard to go to an environment that you know does not serve them. And then you say, Oh, yeah, man, we need better education. Why? Because you ain't shit. But then you're punishing your kids for not excelling in this environment. And you not even going to excel in it for your own individual self so you could be the asset to them to help them excel and extract any pros out of this school system, any positives that come out of this school system. You not even making yourself an asset to the things that you're responsible for creating and reproducing to make them greater. Mm. What's your career? Man, I'm just trying to figure it out. Been working and, man, trying to get out this job. How many people you know work the same job 10 years, paycheck to paycheck, living broke? Nigga, what, what, when do you get the balls to quit? Mm. What point do you say this don't work? Creatures of comfort. It's comfortable to talk about dumb shit. It's comfortable to, 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 to be okay. It's comfortable. It's uncomfortable to do things that's great. Mm. It's uncomfortable to think about something that everybody ain't thinking about, even though I want to be greater and I want to be better. But since it's not comfortable, I don't do it. Mm. Has to be uncomfortable. Let me ask you this then. You just snapped on a couple. I'll let you get your your clips off because you was was going crazy. (laughs) i just let you cook because there's a couple little clips in that motherfucker. Like, let him cook. But no, so. it's, 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 it's not random, but I'm curious. You talk about LeBron and shit like that. But your mindset is different, and you got to acknowledge that, right? Even when Trap came in here, and he was like, bro, how he broke it down, how he was doing business in jail, that's different. And it made me, it, it made, it made me think about, like, this GOAT conversation. And I was wondering, do you think that the GOAT, a.k.a. your mindset as well, right? I'm trying to correlate the two. Is that something that you inherit? Or is that something that you can work to get to? Or is that something that you're born with? Because everybody don't come out the womb Genetic, thinking like that. Genetics do play a part. Genetics does play a part. Right? Genetics plays a part. But more is caught than is taught. Mm. So, genetics... Some things, some people are incapable 
of doing mentally. They just have mental, whether it's the traumas and the things that they went through growing up and experiences that mold them into who they are. And some people just genetically stupid, just call it what it is, right? Where they can't think critical, it's just like they they got issues mental. It's real. We 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 have mental issues in our community where everybody can't. Mm. Just be like, oh, they got learning disabilities. They can't read. They can't write. It's just something that doesn't work. That's 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 real. But on the flip side, more is caught than is taught. Is was I destined to be successful because I got my mom and my dad's DNA? Yeah, well, that's cool. It's, my mom went and got a master's, but at one point she was on drugs. Mm. So she had a, the willpower to go from being in the streets on drugs, homeless, to getting her master's, buying real estate and doing things. My dad was a drug dealer, got convicted for moving over 150 keys, had a, a record store, different radio stations and businesses. So he's an entrepreneur. He had good values, would, you know, help try to make sure the family was okay and keep everybody together financially. So those things play a factor. It's like, yo, it's a little easier for you. You come from a hustler mm. and a mom who's smart too. You got two hustlers as parents. Cool. The examples of which I pulled from them though, because I could have took it as I ain't got no dad. My dad went to prison for murder, murder for hire, and selling keys and money laundering. And uh-uh-uh. So I should probably go down that path. Man, my mom used to be on drugs. Man, I was crack baby. I got addictive personality. Anything I do, I love it. I'm addicted to shit. I get into something I like anything, like I'm with it. Oh, man, I, if I should start drinking or smoking weed. No, I knew I have addictive personality. Mm -hmm. I know how I am with food, candy, certain shit. If I like something, I'm on that. So I don't smoke weed. I don't do drugs. Why? Because I'm going to do it mm. to the fullest extent. Is that genetic or is that myself being able to make choices, right? Then I say more is caught than is taught. I learn I'm responsible for my choices because my dad is in fucking prison. Cool, you a hustler, nigga, but you in prison. But I get the confidence to know that I can get money from you. But my mom showed me, oh, I'm going to go to work and I make $4,000 a month. Every time she get paid every week, she count the money out. As she counts the money out, I'm like, young nigga, ah, oh, we up, it's good. <clears throat> nah, this got to go there. Count me this and put it there. Put 120 over here for this. Put this over here for this. Put this over here because we got a payday loan that we still got to pay back. Put this over here for this. So all the bills every single, every week, we putting money up to pay bills. Okay. Fuck. I got nothing. But the third week, it's a pal that's left. This is the week that I can go and get my T-shirts, my shoes, my fitted caps, everything. I can go get it on the third week. She taught me about budgeting, managing money, understanding how money works. When you get paid, you just don't get to just go do whatever you want. 14, she bought a house. She got herself added on to a deed of a house. She put herself on a deed, on a mortgage, on a deed. I mean, on a deed, a year later, after being on the deed, she refinanced it and took the owner off the deed, and she bought an Escalade and wrapped it into the mortgage. Mm. So the mortgage only went up by $30, $40. But we got the pink slip. We got the pink slip to the Escalade, free and clear. My thing is, how much money we finna to lose? Because on my third week, that's my shit. So how much this cost? She like, it only costs us an extra $60, $40, $50 a month. She taught me about real estate, how to buy cars, getting things that you want. More is caught than is taught. Genetically, plays a part. But parenting plays an even bigger part by the examples that are being set and the things that they're exposed to and how they're taught how to think and process what they look at. Mm. So I process 
And I learned my mom had a credit union and my mom had a bank account. I understood the two differences. Early on, on accident. That's the shit that helped me become a millionaire. Mm. Can I say that she did it on purpose and she told me? She didn't tell me shit. She showed me shit. Mm. So because of the shit she showed me, it changes how I operate, how I think, and how I move. When it comes to our next generation, oh, man, I'm nobody showed me shit. Well, you 40, nigga. You're going to have to figure it out, bro. But as you figure it out, if you know nobody shows you nothing, what the fuck you showing the kids behind you? Mm. You know you fucking them up. So you got to show them something. Guess what? If I got to show and prove myself to my kids, who, who benefit from it the most? Mm. Me. I'm trying to show y'all something. So do it for, for, I'm doing it for y'all, but I have to be the example. I can't be out in the club all nights. I can't be getting drunk and dr drinking and driving, doing coke, getting high, smoking hella weed. Because I got to be the example for y'all. I got to spend my time wisely learning because I got a bigger battle to overcome just so y'all don't. And y'all can just see, like, how things are handled. But I got to involve y'all, too. Mm -hmm. So it's like the way that we think is that, is it, you said, is it genetics or everybody can't think like this? We can't. But everybody can copy and follow suit. It's not hard to follow suit of what already happens. Mm -hmm. I had to think for myself. I thought, but I'm really following suit. It's not my way of thinking. It's my way of acting. Mm. I've been taught by actions to operate like this. Now when I get mentors and I go in certain rooms and I talk to certain people and I hang with certain people, it's by actions. You bring up trap. We talk every day. Every day. Neo, every day. Why? Actions. The things that we do on a daily and who I talk to in the environments that I'm in. My parents, my mom can't help me now. I now have to pick what actions I duplicate and who I copy, mm. who I emulate, who I spar with, who I learn from. And you got the open world because a lot of people that you can pick to build with and try to learn from emulate. Social media lets you watch mm. for free. And you'd be like, oh, well, I want to do a podcast, but I don't know. Like, man, don't nobody, nobody teaching me shit. Nigga, just watch. If you don't want to pay, if they want to charge you or they're not willing to teach you, just watch. Because everything that they do is fucking public. You can get on. I can go join. Just use Trap as an example. I can see him do Trapping Tuesdays. I can see how he repurposed Trapping Tuesdays. I can see how he do his descriptions. I can see what thumbnails he do, how he do his thumbnails. I can see how he sell his Patreon. Whenever he run an ad, I can go buy his ebook. I can go click on the links. I can join his Patreon. I can see every fucking thing. It might cost me fucking $300. I'll be getting all your text messages. I'll get all your email sequences. I'll get all, look at, I can look and see what time you put your content out. Turn your YouTube TubeBuddy on. I can turn TubeBuddy on. It's going to pull me all your analytics and show me everything. I can see everything. It's free. Oh, man, they don't teach. Nigga, it's free. Just go watch instead of being a consumer mm -hmm. if you want to be in that person's shoes. Or you figure out somebody to teach you and you get around mentors mm -hmm. because they also do the same thing, but it costs for somebody else because they're not your parents. Parents got to do it because they love you, and you get free access to them. Unfortunately, some of us just got fucked up parents where you got free access to a motherfucker going down the wrong road 100 miles an hour. Yo, you you were saying something about um the uh addictive personality. And there was a time where like you were like huge and you had to like you went to go get surgery. Yep. But it made me think about that because I watched your episode when you explained it. And I'm not going to lie to you, bro. That was some of the best content I've ever seen. Hmm. Like, I know, like, y'all, I was going to ask you about the circle CEOs and shit like that. Like, y'all talk money shit and finance shit. Like, that's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, yeah. I, I want to make, nah, I make a million dollars. It's cool. You get, but when I watch that, bro, no. I never, like, I don't know you, right? So it's like, I only see, like, you popping your shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I watched that, bro, that shit in my line, I, I was I was like, bro, 
this shit made me, it's so crazy because I'm like, I don't even need to interview the nigga no more. Because <laughs> like, that's what I t- like to talk about. Yeah. When I watched it, I'm like, yo, that was, that was good, bro. Yeah. What made you do that? Bro, that shit started fucking my money. <laughs> For real? You losing weight? Yes, nigga. Every post I put out, yo, what you do to lose weight? Yo, what's the secret? Is it Ozempic? This nigga got cancer. Mm. Nigga, you dying. Nigga, I... You see how many views on that shit? Mm. It's everybody wanted to know. It was. It started becoming a... I, I, tried, I did it for myself. Mm. I ain't do it for social media and shit. Like, I was doing it for myself. Nigga, I'm finna die out this bitch. Like, I'm trying to live. Like, bro, that shit just... It was so drastic and it became like, I could look, it was the number one thing people Google when they search him 500. Mm. It's like him 500 weight loss. It's all they was looking for. And I'm like, damn, all right. I got to figure out a way to talk about this shit. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like, I didn't do it in a way so like I wasn't trying to monetize it. So it wasn't like, yo, I'm about to sell a plan. I got a weight loss pill. I got some, it was just like, bro, I didn't have nothing. Um, for even for niggas to buy or nothing like that. It wasn't the way I was trying to monetize it. I really was doing it for myself. But it started messing up business because I couldn't do nothing without, that was the number one question. That's what everybody wanted to talk about. That was the main focus. What's Mm -hmm. going on? What's that? How you lose weight? So I had to, and I'm like, all right, well, cool. I'm doing wealth therapy. Let's just put it out there, share it, talk about it. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That's why I asked you who was recording your shit. Cause like when I seen it, granted, it was like probably five months ago, maybe six, but I, when I seen it, I literally was like, bro, like it made me wanna, I'm like, bro, this shit shouldn't look like this. In my mind, I'm dumb dead ass. I'm looking at it, I'm like, bro, I'll pull up today and help this nigga. Like I really was like, bro, mm-hmm. I wanna help. Like it, because it was just so good. And mind you, it was a space that I never saw you in. So like when I seen it, I'm like, yo, I like this nigga. Like it. It's, I, I can't explain it. it. It's just it really. I commend you for that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people they aren't even they don't even know how to be vulnerable. You know what I'm trying to say? And um, I was wondering, do you ever like think about that old Marcus at all? Yeah, I'm not gonna pass what you said. You see, I use like you identify. <laughs> Y'all help this nigga with the mic shit. <laughs> nah, I come in this motherfucker. I ain't gonna hold you because the way that it helps me separate on camera and shit like that, right? And this is like. This is like we real like having a conversation, bro. Like, look, bro, I I tell you, bro, I'm human. I'm not a nigga that's like, oh, ego, pride. I know my quality for the shit that I shoot is not that great. Mm. Can I easily go, hey, come produce my shit? Yeah, you can. (laughs) You can. But (laughs) what happens is, is that then I gotta I gotta deal with it. Like I ain't even putting my shit on audio, nothing. I know what I'm not doing, this, right? It's crazy. But you know how many niggas got shows and shit that they can't do it? Mm. I'm 21, 22 weeks in. I'm just showing niggas what you want to do. Just work. I'm not a podcast nigga. Mm. I ain't. I can't interview people. I don't know how to ask people questions. I talk too fucking much. I'm the nigga want to talk. So I sit here by myself. But I may start interviewing people. But I'm just showing like, look, this is just consistency. Do you have dedication and are you consistent in something? It doesn't matter if it got to be the best. I'm coming in from somebody who's already high level and you would think like, oh man, your shit should be top top tier producing, all of that. And it's like, nah, I can start and do just like you. Mm-hmm. I went from, I got a hundred and some thousand subs, now 102,000 subs. I took this shit in May. Grew 60,000 subs, putting out content, putting it out, putting it out, putting it out, putting it out. I'm just showing people and, it, and it's nobody behind it. It's one person. I bought my own cameras and just, I just place them. I'm sitting in my living room in my house. I ain't even leaving. At the house. Here, boop, come here. I, and I'm freestyling. I don't got a script. Fucking intro video. One intro video. It's one person sitting there. Intro time, go. I, I, they know the cues. That's it. Ain't nothing else. I don't see comments. I ain't talking about super chats. None of that. Bro. I'm not big on YouTube. I may, I'm making myself relevant on YouTube. I just show people, bro, it ain't nothing that you can't do if you just fucking work. No, nah, facts. And it's the confidence in yourself to do it even when you don't get no reward. You get no fucking money off YouTube. I'm just connecting more with the people. It's just allowing me to meet and connect with the people on another level 
but also I shoot wealth therapy for an hour and it give me 10, 15 pieces of content to put out on social, on Instagram and stuff in shorts and put out clips every week. So I shoot for an hour and it give me clips all week. Mm. Then out of them clips, it just helped me produce content. That's nothing but a content session for me. I sit there for an hour and I figured out how to make content. Then I started figuring out how to make money. This is the fucked up part. Is that now, dude, fucking, I can make fucking five to fifteen thousand dollars episode. Mm. This nigga sitting at their house with three hundred thousand <laughs> subs ain't getting nothing. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about the money. I was just like, this shit is gold. I'm like, bro, it, in my line, I literally was like, bro. But I'm gonna ask you a question about the vulnerability, because you asked me about what made me be vulnerable. Um. I'm, I live on. I live online. Mm. My life is out there. I, I it, at this point, you get into the point where people want to get online and, and create content and shit like that. You got to be willing to just put your life outside. Mm. Is what it is. But your life is only again. Before I watch this video, your life is no, no. I think about it. Your life is only out there for what you wanted to be out there for. It ain't really nothing besides the little. I think a couple years ago it was a couple niggas talking some scamming shit. But the fraud shit. Fraud shit. Mm -hmm. Besides that, your image on the gram and YouTube is getting money, nigga. It ain't nothing crazy. So you ain't have to do that. Like it wasn't yeah. like But I'm so I'm I'm so I'm such a public facing person. Meaning, nigga, you 350 pounds. Now you a buck eighty. Nah, fuck out of here, bro. I fuck with you. I rock with you. I've been learning from you for years. I, I, but my my nigga, this is what happened. You can't just come can't back just, yeah, yeah, yeah. and be like, what? What y'all talk about? Like, nah, nigga. Ah, uh -uh, you finna. But there's a difference between saying yo, I got surgery, mm -hmm. and I'm giving you roses. Take your roses, nigga. Like, it's a difference between saying, bro, I got surgery. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Medical procedure. I had to do it. And having a whole what I was something plus vulnerable session like that was lit that was dope as fuck like I, I mean I just I, I wanted to explain it so people got it but then I also knew other people gonna go because then whenever I say I do something or I did it it makes it okay for other people to do it mm. so I have to kind of <laughs> lay the foundation of why how how I feel. How I processed it, everything that I went through, you know what I'm saying. So, in that in that moment when I sat down and did that, it wasn't just talking about oh I got a surgery I lost weight. Mm. They don't want to know that oh I got a surgery and lost weight. Like people are gonna be sitting there like bro I'm 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 dealing with this. What do you what did you deal with that made you get surgery? Mm. How did you deal with the, the 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 coming back after the surgery? How did you feel? Everything that goes with it, how you maintain, nigga, how you, why your skin ain't sagging, like, they gonna wanna know. If I don't tell you now, they gonna ask me my DM. Mm. Then my DMs is in shambles behind this shit. Like the weight loss, it was controlling my DMs. Like, nigga, I can't even sell nobody nothing. You, you niggas just only worried about my weight loss. Yeah. So I had to tell the truth and I had to answer everybody's question that they would come back with. And explain it and let people know like you look at me respect me and follow me for so much but this is something that's super important and I started seeing how important it was to people and how many people was in my inbox asking and it's like it's, it's life or death for a lot of people so I had to just be like look this is what it is this is how I handle it this is why this is how I felt and y'all get to look into my world of like I'm I feel like y'all feel now, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I, like I said, I've been following you for a while now. Mm -hmm. And don't make me don't make me regret saying this, but I, I think that might be you. Like, you might be a genuine nigga. Again, I don't know you, but you said like it's... Because even during... Now that I think about it, even during the, 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 the little first shit nigga was talking about, mm -hmm. you hopped online to talk about nigga, Like, to talk about shit like, yo, look, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about, yep. but this ain't that. Like, I remember that. It, I remember you was like in a chair, like in your, in your office. Yep. Like, you... You went live and talked about it. You be straight up like, bro, I don't know what the fuck. Hey. You know, I stand on anything I do and anything I say. Yeah, so. Shit is what it is. And I got, with that situation, nigga, shit, nigga says something cool. I get it, nigga. My platform bigger than what it is, nigga. But this ain't that, nigga. I'm a hustler. I help niggas get money. And ain't no nigga online getting, helping niggas get more money than me. Mm. Period. Niggas can say, oh, well, that's kind of questionable. Nigga, listen. 
right or wrong, I didn't, I didn't led the path. Now we here. Ain't nothing we can do about the past. Mm-hmm. What's been said or, oh man, that's a little unethical. Okay, cool. What are they gonna do about it now? Mm-hmm. We here. We fix it where we at. But when it come to actually helping entrepreneurs, I teach people so much more than credit. I teach people how to start businesses. I teach them online marketing. I teach them how to run email campaigns, text campaigns. You name it in business, not just getting funding, access to funding, how to clean your credit, how to, you know, actually build it out. It's a million things that I teach people, bringing people together, showing people how to actually build friendships and, 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 and commodity, doing free conferences. Nigga, ain't, name another nigga that put two billion, two million up, 2.3 million on a conference for free. Did you bring, did, did you bring Floyd? Floyd Mayweather to Miami. But and it was like the big stage and. Yeah. So. You think about it. Go go back to that. I, I, I flew I flew three hundred plus people down on on on, on seven fifty seven jets, like from Atlanta to to Miami. Like niggas ain't do what I did and impacted this culture, this whole conference shit, this whole conference space. All of that shit stems from shit that I did. And then you have like you like kind of like painted the the airport like did the whole airport covered it marketing. Come on, I did the fight like you know. And so what what happened is is that I lead the way and then you know. People don't realize is that as many people love you, mm-hmm. certain percentage got to hate you. And, and then it. niggas got to have a community of somewhere to go in and, and, and spew that hate. Mm. And that's fine. But that shit come with the territory. But it ain't never going to be a time where a nigga like me don't stand on what I do and how many people I help. The business I set up, nigga, I'm not a fucking pastor. I ain't no fucking uh, peace preacher. Uh, I'm not one out here that's saying I'm here to save the people. I, I run a business that help my people grow and get to money. I'm not I'm not the one to be like I'm not Martin Luther King. I operate a for business, a for profit business. I created an education platform that has proven results to help people grow and get money. I got an education platform. I got 26 chapters across the United States. Niggas not doing this. Not for us. Not that look like us. So it ain't never, you know, when 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 we get into that, it's like, yo, bro, listen. Niggas can't touch the the foundation that I set, the 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 things that I've created, the creativeness that that, that I've had, the impact that I've had. But that's him five hundred speaking. That shit mm-hmm. don't. That shit ain't never like bother you because you when you genuine, you want niggas to know you genuine. It went like yeah, you know every it's going to be haters. That sound good, but when you living in it, it's like bro, these niggas got me fucked up. I'm not that person. That does, does that ever like Look, fuck with you? No, you know what I mean. Niggas love me. Yeah. You know how that shit feel? <laughs> you know what I mean? Niggas love me, bro. Like, right. that shit trump. Mm. You know what I mean, nigga? When I go in rooms, nigga, I, I get love from everybody. Mm. Nigga, I'm at a Raw Wave concert, nigga, getting love. Mm. Celebrities, everybody, like, f- from the top to the bottom, bro, anywhere I go, I get love. Mm. A lot of things, I think people see things online, and they think that things are real. Until you look at the person who's actually, like, typing the comment. And you'll be reading comments like, oh, they said this. You go look at the person who said the comment. It's a nigga with, like I had a nigga on my page. I started grilling. This nigga had one gold tooth in his fucking mouth. He had a C-minute gold tooth. And he said some goofy shit on, on, in a comment. And I'm like, I went to go look at him. And I said, it's no way in hell that I can take anything serious from a nigga with one gold tooth, semen in the front of his fucking mouth, online, talking in... 2023. Come on, bro. Don't make me do this, bro. What? Th- that's what I'm not it is. talking about people, bro. I'm talking about people. They talk about me. Nah, 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 nah. I, yo, I know but, too much. Mm-hmm. I'm act, and I ask questions, bro. So, yeah. so because but, it's that's easy to ignore. Mm-hmm. But when there's a nigga who got a little clout too, and, uh, and got got a background too, and niggas respect too, that might be different though. Is it? What's different? You might feel like you got to prove yourself. Bro. That's why I said don't go there. It ain't, but, but that, that's I know the thing. Too much. I, I, I do bro, my research. Huh? Yeah, 100%. But listen, bro. I don't never got to prove myself, bro. I respond and react to anything I want to. Mm. When I choose and when I feel to. Nothing makes me act or do anything. Mm. I do what I want, how I want, when I want. If I want to react, I can. If I don't, I can say fuck it, mm. let it ride. What I, anything, only thing in this world you can control is yourself. Facts. Nigga say something about me, I put out an ad. <laughs> oh, you going viral for this? 
cool. Then I just put out Hillary Souls and Hillary, ah, 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 and start spinning. So anybody that come and look, this is what you're going to see. Mm. I control <laughs> me. That's why I'm where I'm at. This shit ain't no accident. I got control of myself. And that's when we talked about it, nigga, you got to have control of yourself because niggas get emotional. Mm -hmm. You ain't never seen me break out and get emotional. You ain't never seen me sweat. You ain't never seen me bend. You ain't never seen me fold. Nigga, this shit don't stop. And it still ain't stopped. Cribs got bigger. Watches got more expensive. More jewelry. Ain't so shit. Shit, I just got a Cuban today. <laughs> this thing's crazy. I just, uh, nigga, just... Pop your shit. new one. I just got a new yeah, one. Yeah, pop your shit. To, to you match my about? motherfucking, you know, I got an AP yeah. with that funny color rose gold. I had to go get all my jewelry motherfucking to match my motherfucking AP. I got a motherfucking AP wedding ring with diamonds. Like, nigga, ain't shit. Ain't nothing stop. Pop stopped. your shit, nigga. Fuck you talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing stop. So that's the thing is that, bro, I control me. Mm -hmm. And that's what people got to understand in this life. Like, you only got control of yourself. Thanks. Any situation that come your way, it could be bad. It can be because mm -hmm. it could be... And it's, it's not that, oh, man, <laughs> nigga, I'm a saint. I'm not a saint. So niggas can have opinions on me. I get that. But if a nigga can have an opinion on you, you got to look at sometimes and see, well, is that true? Mm. Is it validity to what they say? You can't just be like, oh, nigga, a hater because they say something about you. Don't mean they, they're a hater. Mm. Listen to what they say. What come out of hate, anger, what's true? What do you need to fix? That eliminates that. Mm -hmm. Now, most niggas get emotional and want to go into dual mode and be a fucking dueler. I'm not a fucking dueler, bro. I'm not finna to be out here battling and shit like that. So that's the way I think and operate, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, facts. Yeah, man. I was asking you before we got to that tangent. Yeah. When the last time you looked at that, 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 that Marcus, that, what, almost 400 pounds, three, 360? 360. They ain't four. We gonna keep it in threes. That four, <laughs> that four do something different. Three sixty. Like when? When the last time you looked at? Did you have you ever like re reflect on life and just look like, damn man, this could have been different. Yeah, look at it, bro. We had a conversation the other day. Somebody was like, man, you know, health is wealth. And I said, nigga, I've been on both sides of the spectrum. Keep that shit. Wealth is wealth. Health is health. You can't have one without the other. Yes, you can, because I was unhealthy to the motherfucker, but I, the bag was there. And I wouldn't trade shit. I'm blessed to be able to do what I did, get into this position, and maintain this lifestyle now. I'm 100% happy. I feel good. I feel amazing. But if a nigga was like, yeah, man, would you trade it? I wouldn't. I take, I take like, I don't regret being fat. I enjoyed that shit. I enjoyed my life. I enjoyed the shit I was doing. A little uncomfortable moments on getting on airplanes and shit, but I was okay. But I think that a lot of times people can conduce and put that like, man, you know, now you, you, you all the way together. It's like, nigga, I was all the way together when I was fat. My brain was working when I was fat. And just because some, it's going to be people out there who are overweight and dealing with that and thinking that they need to lose weight to be successful or it's going to help them make more money. That shit ain't true. And I was a fat nigga getting more money than fucking 99% of the world. 99.5% of the world as a fat dude with health complications, with bad eating habits, with, with, with no discipline in that aspect of my life. And I don't want people to think like, oh, man, I need to lose weight. Like, it's going to change everything. It don't change nothing, bro. You can be overweight and still get to it. It's just the way the only thing you got to control is your thinking. Now, can you end up dying early? Yeah, but I know a lot of niggas with six-packs that goddamn is a spinach smoothie away from being homeless mm. because they fucking spend all their money on health and nutrition, but financially they in ruts. But they look amazing. <clears throat> but, that's you know, that's crazy because that, that made me think of a, a, a statement that... I've heard this before him, but let's credit him for this, for the sake of this conversation. Your man say all the time. Who? That's my dog, too. I fuck with you. Neo. Mm -hmm. He would say, the way you do one thing is how you do everything. So think about that. If you're undisciplined in your health, you will be undisciplined in, in your spending habits or your money habits, and clearly that's not the case. 
discipline and health means what? Like when it comes to like, oh, I need to be all in on eating and taking care. It's a different level when somebody's obese and they got to be disciplined. Like for me, it wasn't like, oh, man, I eat any time of nights and doing things like that. In order for me to lose weight, I don't have to be disciplined. I have to be over disciplined. Mm. I have to actually work to get the weight off. You don't just lose weight by being disciplined. You can't be fat and be like, okay, I'm going to eat. I'm going to start eating right. And the weight just going to come off. You got to deal with, you got to understand your blood type, your, the things, what foods is good for you. You got to constantly study. You have to work at that. You could work at doing business and you figure out, okay, well, one of them going to suffer. That was my standpoint. But how you do anything is how you do everything in certain aspects. And I think he's referring to business Mm -hmm. because you can't excel in everything and at everything at the same time. You're not going to be able to be excellent in your health all the way to the fullest, excellent in business, excellent in your spiritual side, and excellent in your motherfucking uh, relationship and side too. It's so many different components to life. You got 100% of your efforts. Let's just do like this. You got health, wealth, <clears throat> spiritual, and family, relationships. You got 100% of effort. That's all you got is 100% of effort. It's only you. Mm-hmm. Out of those four, which one are you giving 100? Which one are you going to give 50 or 75? Or are you going to give 25 here, 25 here, 25 here, 25 here? Well, guess what? You ain't you ain't great as shit. Yeah, you're an average ass nigga. I give 75 into my business, 25 into my goddamn relationships because they understand that I'm putting 75 over here and they're willing to accept that. Guess what? These other two going to suffer. I ain't going to flip the camera off, but these other two going to suffer. But you got to look. You only got 100% of your efforts. You're only a person. So you only got 100% of your efforts. Mm. If you put 50% into your health, 50% into your into building wealth, where your family? Where about your spiritual side? If I put a 75% into getting money for the next three years, five years, then I can supplement and take some of this wealth to make this process easier. Mm. And it's fucked up. And I'm not saying it's good. Because I took the easy way. I feel like I cheated this, that, and the third. I'm not, it ain't something that I'm like, oh man, I would do, but it's my reality. The level of financial gain I was able to reach, I did $35 million in fucking three years. Nigga, check it out. $10,000 to get a surgery. Then I got to maintain. I, I could already pay for a chef. I could do all these other things, make my life easy and get my blood work done every quarter and check my, my levels and really understand that I'm able to think and operate at a whole nother level. I'll take it. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I'm going to keep it all the way funky with you. I love it. It's just confirmation. I tell people all the time. Get to the fucking money. That shit gonna help you figure out anything, yo. Like, it, it, niggas hate when I say it. Cause, but who am I? But when 35 million up, when you say it, nigga probably listen. I was saying to me, it sounds great. I'm like, cause I say all the time, man, fuck this shit. If I got, man, I'll do this shit out in the basement if I had to for a second. We gonna get this money. And then I come back in a bigger space. I just, I, like, bro, I swear to God, this confirmation. Yeah, like bro, I'll niggas up. make this shit so overcomplicated, bro. Listen, the money come before everything, man. Mm-hmm. And I'm 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 that person. I'm not your spiritual person. I'm not the, you know, go to to pray and this that and the third. Like, I'm the money nigga. And I tell people I identify my role. I'm there's somebody who you need a spiritual mentor. You need somebody who pours into you spiritually, who 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 teaches you about the word and teaches you about faith and teaches you about that. That ain't me. So don't look for me for that guidance and don't hold me to a standard like, oh, yeah, uh, man, you should be more inclined with. That ain't me. That's not what my strong point is. And that ain't what my calling and my role in my community is. I help people make money. I want to help business owners and entrepreneurs get to money. That's what I focus on. So that's what I'm going to be. That's why I want to talk about the health shit because I'm like, nigga, it's a million personal trainers out there. And I was mad because I'm like, why these niggas keep asking me all this weight loss shit? It's a million niggas trying to help you lose weight. Mm-hmm. Go to them. Nigga, they got whole systems for you. Mm. But they like, nah, we seen you do it. So we need to know what you did because it worked. But, and I'm like, God damn. But I'm mad. I'm like, nigga, you ain't going to do it because somebody else already did it. But y'all more relate with me and they be giving more comfort. Nah. Yo, we're going to wrap it up. 
you um the circle of CEOs. You're you're part of that, right? Is you Neo, Alex, Alex and Jason and Justin. Yeah. So, circle of CEO, bunch of get money niggas. Who bunch got your fathers? Bunch of husbands. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You Bunch fucking up my question, bro. Yeah, bro nah. I'm do that again. <laughs> Circle of CEOs, right? Once you getting money, niggas. Who got the most money? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? You keep talking. I'm the money man. Are you are you um, the big dog in your circle? I mean, in, in in retrospect, when you say got the most money, worth the most, net worth, where it's at? Net. Let's say net. On net, it's gonna be between me and Alex. Mm. On net, on net worth, it'll be between me and Alex. So if I run go to holler at Justin, like, "Yo, bro, Marcus just said him and Alex, he gonna confirm." We be like, "Man, that nigga a liar." Nah, he ain't. If you say liquid, I would, I would, I would say, um, damn, I don't. It's the thing is. Telling niggas business. Mm, okay, okay. Cause everybody don't. I talk that shit, and it'd be uncomfortable. Like yeah. some people don't yeah. show as like I show. So it's kind of like niggas is like right now, like cause cause we in the states right now is that everybody is working, grinding, building, but we got so many different projects. Everybody's moving, doing different things. You see, Jason just opened a new gym. Justin just launched a new business. Fucking Alex just bought into Jump Shot. So that's why I say like, cause then you gotta take, like I said, Alex, cause you look at his valuation into jump shot. Like what is this business gonna be worth? Mm. Because see, if you look at net worth, I look at my evaluations of the different companies and businesses that I have, which I would supersede because of my ownership in all these different companies and entities mm. that I have that are worth X amount. So my net worth is a little bit Higher. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was just for a clip. I don't even give a fuck. I ain't trying to be in y'all business, man. No. Nah. Like, I don't even care that much. But when you <laughs> like, said it, when you clip that shit, <laughs> niggas gonna watch the episode. And yeah. I know my niggas gonna watch the episode. Like, yeah. nigga, what you trying to say, nigga? Like, yeah. is nah. everybody like. Yeah. It wasn't. I, I, I'm not about to count in that nigga pocket. That's some fucking whole shit. <clears throat> let, it me is. Ask, let me ask you this. Yeah. Because this is what. It, what you see, Some entrepreneurs talk about how, like, buying back your time, right? But then, like, talking about circle of CEOs, one thing that niggas compliment Neo on a lot is, like, his work ethic. Like, niggas is not working harder than him. Like, he really, like, he motivated nigga different. Yeah. Because he make you, nigga, I'm still getting it. Fuck you talking about. What, like, what you think about, like, for the working hard shit as far as, like, my, because clearly it, it can work. Like, I, I feel like he's one of the ones that show you that, nah, I'm getting to it, but I'm still working, I work on you niggas. Nah. Niggas don't realize. See, I, I I I love and I hate that nigga Neo, cause he like a nigga that's like that kid with ADHD <laughs> that he can't do shit but focus on it. So it is just like it's like slick of knowing like this nigga like I guarantee on my phone he's there somewhere right now whether a DM or something he's there talking about something. Mm -hmm. It's just obsessive for him because it's what he does. Yeah. Like I work, I I think I'm constantly grinding. I ain't. I ain't stopping. He the one that say I ain't going back. Yeah. I don't I can't argue with him, but that's where he is. But the nigga is just gonna go. But what people fail to realize is that everybody gotta go until they die. Mm. You're gonna work until you die. If you don't, you like you think about somebody that's like, oh yeah, man, they retired, they just sitting around doing nothing. They ain't have shit going on, they have no motion in life. Mm. They ain't really accomplished too much. Because they still gonna be tied to something. I look at the old senators and the the older the older black leaders and stuff, and they still be at more town hall meetings. They still be at charity foundations. They got golf tournaments they be having to be at and be a part of. You realize like they still it may not be working, but you're still gonna be active with something. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna just be like, oh, it's over. Yep, I made it to this finish line. I'm sitting I down. my time done. back. <laughs> yeah, I got my time back now. I'm doing nothing. So when you wake up in the morning, what do you do? I eat toast, three eggs, <laughs> some jelly, and then for lunch I have it. Like, that's some weird ass shit, and that's some boring <laughs> ass shit. It's like, that shit never exists. But it, it, it'll tell poor people that. 
Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, eventually you're gonna be able to buy your time back and not work no more. Like that's that shit that they used to pull. Why the fuck? Why the fuck you think, nigga, we come from Africa where we had all the fucking diamonds and all the fucking gold and we had all this shit and white people had Bibles. Mm. They came with religion. Now we got fucking religion. Every fucking hood you go to, we got fucking religion. And now everybody in our community, our older generation, thought that I'm just going to pray myself into, into a better situation. Mm. When I die, my life is going to be better. Now these niggas' life is better because they got all the fucking commodities and all the things that control value and are monetized. So now you got all the gold, the diamonds, and everything, and we got all the fucking Bibles. Mm. And life gonna get better when we die. Nigga, tell me, yo, you know material things ain't all that. Like, you know, you can't take it with you when you go. Well, my nigga, you can't experience it when you go either. Mm. It's the only time you got to do it. So if this the only time I got to actually enjoy this shit and have it, nigga, I want it now. We don't get it, do it again. Can't take it with you when you go, bitch. You better enjoy it. You better get it while you're here then. Because if not, nigga, what's going to happen? You don't know what's on the other side. You don't get to do this shit again. Like, nigga, be like, nigga, ain't no Rolls Royce in heaven. Nigga, so, nigga, you better get one now. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got that bitch ass nigga. <laughs> you better get one now, you bitch ass nigga. Fuck is you talking about? With your dumb ass. <laughs> be, be, that's the bozo shit because they'll Yo, they'll justify it. Savage, bro. Nah, bro, listen. They will nigga, they will justify that shit and make you feel bad for accomplishing something. Mm. And that's that's one of the biggest plights in our community is like, yo. We thinking that, oh, we'll pass off. It's going to be greater later. Mm. No, do it now. Get it now. I'm not waiting. I don't want to wait. I want to get I want to get rich as quick as I fucking can so I can be as rich for as long as I fucking can mm. and enjoy it for as long as I can. I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, it's, and in 25 years, 30 years, you know, I'm going to take the slow road. I don't want to take the slow road. My nigga, I've been fucked up all my life. Mm. I'm trying to get as far away from this shit as quick as possible. Yo, before we get out here, bro. Come on, man. Quickest way to get it right now. How? Is it possible? How can we get it quick? If they want to get rich right now, you master on survive, creating everybody right now. Look, man, during the gold rush, you didn't. The people didn't get rich searching for gold. The people got rich selling shovels. Yeah. So you got to figure out how to sell shovels to everybody that's running to the internet, that's running to be an entrepreneur, that's running to try to get money. They want to create podcasts, YouTubes, and all that shit. Oh, man, like you said, oh, man, your license shit ain't all that. And it's cool, and nigga can identify that. Okay, well, what's the odds of you going and making hundreds of millions of dollars from a podcast, or what's the odds of a nigga who's sitting there going, I know how to do lights, I know how to set the cameras up. Cool, here, listen, give me $3,000 a month. I'm going to set all your cameras up to set all your lights up, and then I'll come in and run your whole show for you. Just give me $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month, I'm going to disperse it on YouTube. I'm going to disperse it on um I disperse it on YouTube. I put it on Red Circle. Put it all over there. Make sure all your shit is there, and send everything out for you. Give me two for that twenty five hundred a month, mm. nigga. Like, shit, you gonna set the lights up? Yeah, be, or else your shit gonna be looking like this, my nigga. And your audio ain't right. You got the wrong mic. You putting it in the wrong place. I'm gonna put it all out for you. Twenty five hundred dollars a month. This nigga ain't slick. No, 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 no. Wait, I ain't done. Cause you said how nigga get rich. Go ahead, go ahead, go twenty five hundred dollars a month don't get a nigga rich. Mm. Ten niggas paying a nigga twenty five hundred dollars a month help make twenty five thousand dollars a month. Does that make him rich? No. So now you got ten people giving you twenty five hundred dollars a month because they're everybody's rushing to do this. So now I'm making twenty five thousand dollars a month. So now I start figuring out. Well, I'm gonna start documenting what I do. Now I got a twenty five thousand dollar a month business. I ain't the the brightest nigga when it comes to math, but twenty five thousand a month times my fucking twelve months. Is what is that? Three hundred thousand. So now I'm sitting there doing. Is that three hundred? It's three hundred thousand, right? Okay. So now I'm doing three hundred thousand. I'm gonna tell you what his occupation is, right? Okay. <laughs> so I'm doing three hundred thousand dollars a year now, off of helping ten people for, for twenty five hundred dollars a month. Now I start to figure out, okay, what's my? Well, how do I scale this? How do I create this into my own media component, my own media company to where I start doing this for bigger brands? Saying, okay, look, these are the analytics that I can get. Now, okay, well, how can I run a campaign and run certain campaigns for bigger businesses and start to become and build my own media component out, my own media business? Because it's not just about creating content. You got to start understanding the algorithm. You got to understand keywords. You got to understand descriptions. You got to understand thumbnails. You got to understand the social media algorithm. Understand it on the back of somebody else. Pay me to learn this shit, then now I can build a media company out to where I can then go and say, oh, I'm going to go do Coca-Cola. 
oh, I'm going to get a deal with um, fucking Spanx. Got a, uh, Spanx is out. I just, just think of Sarah Blakely. But I'm going to run their media component space now, but now they're going to pay me multiple six figures a year to control theirs. Mm. It starts to grow. So and you just figure out, okay, how do I do things to get to a bag? That's the, that's the easy way now where you can go make multiple six figures of understanding lights and shit. And you can watch YouTube videos and tell you how to do it. And then you tell the people, buy their own shit. They already have it. Boom. And now I'm, I'm $2,500 a month for 10 people. Mm. Well, how do I find 10 people? Nigga, it's a numbers game. Stupid. You know those stats you looking at knowing all LeBron, how many times he shoot to go, how many points, and I'm going to bet my over and unders. If I DM 100 niggas, Mm -hmm. and I get two niggas to respond every hundred, every hundred DMs, I get 10 responses, and one person says yes, I need to send out a thousand DMs, and now I'm making $25,000 a month. Wait, I got to send a thousand niggas DMs? You Stay don't broke, nigga. <laughs> 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 you bitch ass nigga. <laughs> nah, this is crazy. Yo. Now we snap. This is fire. How long is this fucking episode? This is the longest episode I've did this fucking year. And put it, put that shit all out together. This shit gonna be fucked. <laughs> put the whole thing out. I'm telling you, like, but that'd be the thing, though, bro. It'd be them long conversations because then it get them hours don't give enough time to really get comfortable. Mm. Start talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, get it. You see Dream Champs, that shit be so long. Nigga I'll take a clip and you be like, where the fuck is this at? And you didn't watch the episode four or five times trying to find it. Yeah. You see a new clip and be like, when the fuck did he say that? Yeah. But you know, I go like going back to the the, the, the get rich shit. It's crazy because I we, just, we had some good conversations, bro. I was saying, that's my problem. My problem is like, how do you want to do shit for free? Not, I like money, don't get me wrong. Mm. But like, again, when I seen it, I'm like, bro, my first mom was like, man, I just, let me just help this nigga. My man's like, man, you stupid as shit, man. You niggas pay for this. And I don't know, I just, like me, I'm just the type of nigga, like, I, I love to like add value to a room first. But if you did mine, you would make more money than, I, than, than you made from me. Man, you will take the dinner with Jay-Z ass nigga. 100%. But let me explain something to you. <laughs> let me explain something to you, though, right? Why you would make more money with doing that. A nigga made my funnel. Nigga made my funnel for my tour for free. I saw that. You seen it, exactly. Okay, well, guess this what? This going crazy. Guess what? He made my funnel. And since he made my funnel, he literally sends me screenshots like, hey, look, they said they want a funnel just like you. I say, it's 10, 15 people that paid you Fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars to build a funnel out. So, so you'd have made fifteen to, if you did a thousand dollars minimum, you'd have made fifteen to thirty thousand dollars off of doing my funnel for free, and showing people that you did it. Mm. Fuck the part is the genius work, the work piece that was genius in 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 the funnel, was my I did it. Mm. I told him to do it. And he like oh bet. Does he understand that? Can you take that IP back? Hell no. And did he do an amazing job? Hell yeah. Did he get that shit done? Hell yeah. Am I mad at him? Hell no. Mm. But that's the point where it comes to self-realization. It's like, shit, if I do this nigga shit, how many people going to pay me because they just want what he got? That's the shit that changed the shit. And yeah, I'm, I'm the nigga that's taking the dinner with Jay-Z, 100%. You can take the damn dinner. It, it, it's just crazy because like niggas only listen. You got to have a bag or be super successful or something for a nigga to listen. All that shit you just said, I be telling niggas all the time, like, bro, if you good at something, do it for a nigga. Like, especially if you're around me, bro. But you can't, you do can't it. tell a nigga it, it's not the same coming from you. And I'm, I'm going to stop you because you just said something's wrong. It's, it's not the same coming from you because what I just said, I told a, I just told a nigga to do, a nigga just did for me and made 30000 mm. It's not, oh, I'm telling you an idea. Yeah. You can't tell a nigga to get on a boat with me and go, we're going to go down this river and get rich and you ain't ever been down it. It's just like, nah, nigga. You get your happy ass on that boat and see because <laughs> every nigga I know went got on the boat and went down that way and they come died. back. Yeah, they ain't came back yet. So you get your you, bitch ass on that boat nigga. and go because I ain't I ain't, ass, nigga. I ain't going. So when when a nigga like me say it, it's different because when when people attach like this happened with this and and this the result. Like I ain't have to say Tony name. You mm -hmm. knew who it was. Mm -hmm. So with, with the nigga the funnel guy name is Tony. It's Tony the funnel guy. I'm down there giving this nigga a plug now. It's it's. <laughs> Tony, what is it? Tony, funnel guy, Tony, or something like that. But he literally built my funnel out. The nigga ran ads and shit. I'm people sending it to me. I'm like, fuck, I let this nigga do it for free. His whole career. I mean, nah, he been getting busy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna discredit him. He been getting busy and he was good. He did that shit. Like, but from that, like all I'm saying, because I met him, I think, once. Mm -hmm. But from that, I see like his 
page has been about doing your funnel. Mm-hmm. And I could be wrong, but from what I've seen, yeah. the promo, I'm like, damn, like I saw, like that's what I see. I'm like, damn, that's just fire. It caught attention yeah. because you used a you used a well known name, and you're like, oh, you work, oh, you did his shit, yeah. and then you would consider like, shit. Well, if that's who they use, then it's cool for me to use them because they gonna use somebody that's solid. Mm. And it's like, shit, he did my shit for free. That funnel shit is crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie, like. It ain't that deep. But, no. To understand the psychology is. You have been doing this for years, so you got to respect who you are. Mm. The funnel shit, I've been doing media shit for years, but, like, the, this whole funnel, get money type shit is new to me. Mm. I was telling my man, like, when I first got here, I thought all this shit was scam. All these circus CEO niggas and them niggas is scamming. Like, that's what I thought. Mm. Until I really get around a nigga who really, like, talking and shit, shout out my, my dog, Shane's. And I'm like, Oh, no. then I meet Neo. I'm like, then I meet Terika. And I'm like, yo, these niggas is really running up a bag. Like, nah, this ain't, like, this community shit is real. Like, this is not, like, this is real and it makes sense. And and fuck the money. This shit can really help you. Like, just as a, per- like, if you, you got a community. You shit you learn. Yeah, it's like, if you got a community of people that's in the church, it could be, forget money. If you mm-hmm. take money out of, you got a community of people that's in church. Mm-hmm. If you got a community of people that's husbands. If you got a community of, of, of people that's parents. Whatever it is, like it really can help you, like yeah. progress, like. And I'm like, damn. But coming from the project, coming from the hood, and these niggas are scamming. Because it's a level, it's a that level of what you don't know and what you ain't been exposed to. It's fake. Mm. It's not real. A lot of people say everything. Um, imagine this: it's people last generation above you that said, "Don't get on the internet. Everything is scam. It's it's fake. Mm-hmm. The internet is dangerous." It ain't gonna last. We ain't using computers. Computers. I don't know what's going on back there in the computers. We ain't doing it. The dot com era. Well, millionaires was made. A lot of millionaires and billionaires were created from the dot com era off of computers. Meanwhile, it's, it's people in your family that was like, man, we ain't getting on that computer fucking them computer shits. Mm-hmm. And now they're struggling to get on fucking Instagram and Facebook going, how you use this thing? Mm-hmm. Well, asshole, you were the first opportunity to learn this thing. You had first dips. Mm. And you thought it was fake because of your lack of education. But that goes to where I say it's unfair because even the smartest people out of the black community aren't at the peak of those who operate at the highest levels. Even the smartest in the top. I'm at one of the top in our space and I'm not at that level of those who come out of higher superior education and experience and business levels. Check this out. And we're going to end it on this, right? They don't tell me when to end my fucking show. Yeah, nigga, I got to go. Nigga. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But check this out, right? If I can go and create and put 20,000 people in my community to teach them about financial literacy and how to bank and how to use certain banking institutions, right? Let's say I take them and I and I take them to Bank of America. They go to Bank of America. I teach them how to get a credit card. How much money do the Bank of America make off one person having a credit card? Over the life, they got a credit card interest. Let's just say the Bank of America end up over the lifetime value of this customer, make ten thousand dollars off of. Say they get a car, they finance a car with Bank of America. Off the car, car note, you can go get you a fifty thousand dollar car. Interest on that, drawn out over paying it off, twenty thousand, fifteen thousand, it's twenty five thousand. Say you get a mortgage, 30-year mortgage, six figures plus that they make. If you went and got a $250,000 house, they'll make $100,000 off of it. So that's $125,000 off of one person I took, right? I take 20,000 people to, to teach them how to use this institution. They look at the value of the customer when it comes and see how much money they're going to make off of it over the long haul. That's, I can say I contribute at least out of 20,000, let's just say five to 7,000 actually complete and do this, buy homes and do these things as I'm teaching in business and go. I can say I probably contribute a billion dollars worth for value. Why? Because not only that, then you look at the value of having the demographic of blacks in the community. So since you got a certain demographic of blacks in the community now, 
your your lending criteria, and it looks like you you you're a fair lender. And the banks they got different benefits and grants and shit for the, these businesses on the back end. So that even in, increases the value of this banking institution, plus the money that they got sitting, plus the amount of loans that they got sitting from blacks. So all of this increases the value. So I damn near contribute. I can say I contribute a billion dollars to this community, to this bank. You get it? Mm-hmm. I made $35 million, $30 million, $35 million from educating my people and telling them how to go bank with them. So I'm sitting here to tell my people how to bank with them, and I bridged and gave this bank a billion. I made a couple million. Nigga, I did business wrong. Mm. I did business down. I didn't do business up. That's the only thing I'm thinking. Like, damn. Imagine. A nigga did business down. I went to my people and sold to my people, but I showed my influence. So now I got proof of concept of that. I can educate my people and get them together. So now I'm looking going, I don't have to sell to y'all. Damn, I fucked up when you said, what's my maturity? And you get to a point in a level where you say, damn, I've grown. Okay, I'm looking at it wrong. I understand how to educate y'all and how to get my people in the right position. And I know why y'all y'all deal with me because I teach y'all how to use their products for your benefit. You motherfuckers can't tell my people how to use it for their benefit because you ain't one of them. So instead of me telling my people to give me money by the couple thousands, I tell these niggas give it to me by the hundreds of millions. Game time. This is fire, man. <clears throat> Him 500... J Hill, J Hill podcast. That shit was good. Appreciate you, brother. That shit was good. Damn.